We are live, Al. Big Al. Big, Big Al's in the house. We are live. Welcome, 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 everybody. We're going to give it a couple, just about a minute or so uh, for people to join in this Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. Excited to be here with you. We are ready to talk about prospecting. And if you're in sales, it doesn't matter what you're in sales. Of course, we always specifically talk about automotive sales. Um, but if you're in sales, prospecting is everything. So we'll give it about 30 seconds for people to join in. Excited. Here till 11 o'clock last night doing a great seminar on leadership, weren't we? Yep, absolutely. It was awesome. But let's talk about prospecting, Al. Prospecting it makes, your, makes your life easier. Well, I, I wanted, you know what I want to do? For, for, for you guys who are just joining us right now, I want to actually read the definition of prospecting because this is so cool. Read the definition. So right behind me is the definition of prospecting. You can go to dictionary.com and you can check this out. So you, this is the definition, the official definition of prospecting. And I love this. An apparent probability of advancement, success, profit, the outlook for the future, anticipation, expectation, a looking forward, a potential or likely customer or client, a potential or likely candidate, a, a view especially of scenery, and then here's the one I really love. To search or explore as for gold. To search or explore as for gold. So here's the thing, guys. Prospecting is, without question, will make the biggest difference in your sales career. You can't be afraid to prospect, and there's many different ways to prospect, right or wrong. We're going to cover I mean, it. Yeah, I mean, and prospecting is everything. I love that definition, to search or explore as for gold. And, you know, we talk about that because that's really what it is, especially in the car business. We do have some downtime, don't we? We have a lot of downtime, but, again, prospect came from the, the, the gold diggers. Yeah. They're prospecting for gold. We're prospecting for business. And that's gold. And that's gold. And it makes our life easier. It makes our bank account bigger. But here's the thing also, right? Think about it. That's where we got the word from. Prospecting is prospecting for gold. And that's why the definition is right there. And that's why I love to read that definition. Because what they would do is they would go and they prospect. And, and I, I love that show. Uh, it's on TV. I forget what the name of it is. But they search for gold. And back in the day, they used to prospect for gold by using this pan and running it through water. And, and then would they get gold all the time? Would they get a gold nugget every day? Right. No, they wouldn't. But every once in a while, they got somebody. Right. And that's what makes the biggest difference in the world. It's the prospecting is the same way. It's about going out there and getting customers. And there's many different ways that you can prospect. You can prospect cold. You can prospect warm. You can prospect your customers right now that you currently have. You can prospect in your neighborhood. You can prospect to businesses. Or you can maintain the current clientele that you have. Yep. So what are some of the techniques that you used to use when you were, uh, when you were, when you were selling cars? Simple. Whenever I paid for something, I gave them a business card. It didn't matter where I was. I pay for it, I give her a business card. I cash my check at the bank, I give her a business card. I always say, if you're interested in a newer used car or want to come down and drive some cars, please, come on down. No pressure. No pressure. No matter where I went. I gave away cards like crazy. And, and you know what the best part about them, are, right? About business cards? They're free. You don't pay for them. The business pays for them for you. I mean, go out there and do it. You know, I use Tommy a lot, right? And you know I always use him as an example because I love the way he prospects. And Tommy, the car guy, Caputo... Um, one of my best friends, and obviously uh, he's a great car guy. You know, he sells a lot of cars, makes himself a six-figure income selling cars, very happy, and he's extremely happy. He makes six figures a year, doesn't work, you know, the hours that most people work because he prospects, prospects, prospects. And again, I want to say this to you. What he would do everywhere I go with Tommy, he has the same thing, the business cards. And what he would do is he'd come up, he, we'd be at the line of Publix, and we'd be paying for something. And sure enough, what he does, he does this. And he hands the card, and he says, my name is Tommy Caputo, and on the back of his card it says, the car guy. He hands it to him his card, and it says, the car guy. Inevitably, when you hand somebody a business card that shows that you sell cars, one of three things is what they say, right? They say, oh, man, I need a car. I'm looking for a car. Number two is, I just bought a car, which is still great. No problem. Just bought a car. Hey, if you have any issues, you want a question, just call me. Great opening line. And the third one is, I have a friend that's looking for a car. That's typically every time you see that. That's what they do. Prospecting is inevitable. You've got to hand out your cards to everybody. That's just the first level of prospecting, if you really think about it. Yep. Everybody knows somebody that, ha that wants a car, needs a car, or maybe just bought a car but needs some help, needs need somebody that is actually there to help them and to guide them, right? Absolutely. So there's a couple of other ways. That's just the first way, you know, prospecting. That's the easiest way is to getting out there and to doing that, right? How about orphan owners? 
Orphan owners. That, that's that's gold. You talk about prospecting, and the definition of prospecting is in search of, right? right? Is in profit. The definition of searching for gold, that's gold. Oh, absolutely. And for people that don't understand, orphan owners are people who bought a car at the dealership and the salesperson is no longer there. They have nobody to call, nobody to count on. Salesperson's gone, they're all by themselves. Yep. And most salespeople don't even want to call these people. Why not call them? Hey, listen, John's no longer here, but anything I can do for you? Or just send them a letter. You know, send them, not an email too, a letter. Here's what I'm saying. Guys, orphan owners is pure gold. These people have already bought from the dealership. They've been in service from the dealership. And now the salesperson doesn't work there any longer. Every time, like if I ask you at your dealership right now, if I'm talking to you and I ask you right now at your dealership, who is working the orphan owner list? 98% of the dealerships we walk in, nobody's working that list. That is pure gold. Mm -hmm. Go over to your sales manager, your service manager, your general manager. Go over to them today and say, can I please have the orphan owner list? I need a list of people that the salespeople are no longer here so that we can actually call those customers back. I can reach out to them. And a simple phone call. Hey, Al, my name is Matt, and I'm calling from ABC Motors. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be your point of contact here. If you need, if you need to come in to schedule an appointment for service, hey, please give me a call. I'm more than happy to take care of that for you. When you come in for service, let me know you're here. I'll get you some coffee and do things like that. You serve, right? You sure. serve. Absolutely. But you're building a list. You're building a prospect. And guess what happens if that customer comes in for service, that you set up that appointment? Go to and ask them, hey, start a conversation. So what are you paying now, Al? What's your monthly payment on this car? 300 300 Well, you know, we've got some great lease programs. Let me... if. if I, what if I could show you a car and we can get you into a special program and maybe even lower your payment? Would that be of interest to you? Sure. Or they're going to say no. If they say no, hey, no problem. But if they say yes, you got a deal. Absolutely. Prospecting that orphan owner list, man, that is pure, pure, pure gold. We had a, a person named Brent. First, I want to give a shout out to Volkswagen of Sanford. Candy, thanks for being here. Candy's Love on the line. Candy's, Candy's on the line. She is. Candy's on the line. Volkswagen, Sanford. And she's Florida. rocking and rolling. Dwayne just joined us. we got a bunch of people on Absolutely. the line Absolutely. But we, this woman named Brenda came into a dealership, and she said, what should I do? And I gave her the orphan owner list. Yeah. And what she did is she called them, she sent them a letter, she sent them a letter when their car was one year old, she constantly, she sent them birthday cards, she got no response, no response, and all of a sudden, when people are ready to change cars, she's the only one in the mailbox, she's the only one notifying them. That's just keeping, and that's cultivating your customer right. list. And that's prospecting as well, isn't it? Yeah. Most people say, listen, John's no longer here. You want to buy a car? Yeah. I don't think so. It doesn't work that way. You know what kills me the most is when we go into a dealership and, and, and we, there's a customer walking around, and you know we're always dressed pretty nicely, so they, they always assume that we work there. And what they say is to us, so they come up to us, and we kind of greet them, hey, welcome to ABC Motors. You know, hey, what can we do for you? And they ask for somebody. And, or if they bought a car previously. Like, I bought a car here three years ago, and I like to look at another car. Oh, great, do you know your sales professional's name? Uh, no, I don't know the name. That's oh. a sad part. That's a sad part. Just, it just hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Does that hurt? Yeah, oh, all the time. That hurts. Can all you imagine? You're building a business within a business, and you do that. So i got to use Tommy as another example, if you don't mind. Right? I use Tommy a lot because, you know, he does this. Now, here's something I got in the mail. Just got in the mail this week. I got the newest edition of the Car Guy Gazette. What is this, basically? It's a, it's a newsletter that Tommy puts together. Tommy the Car Guy Caputo. He puts this together every single month, and he sends it out on this weird color construction paper. And he puts it together. He puts a little paragraph here. He talks about the month of February and how the month of February was. He puts a special thanks to all his customers who purchased the car in the month of February. So many cars under $200 a month, a little bit of advertising, free T-shirt, $100 referral fee. And, but what he's doing here, and he always has a, a goofy, a goofy joke. He always has a goofy joke. What's a goofy joke? This one of the month. What did the valent? What did the caveman give his wife on Valentine's Day? What did the caveman give his wife on Valentine's Day? He clubbed her. No, he's. What did the caveman give his wife on Valentine's Day? Uggs and kisses. <laughs> <laughs> Uggs and kisses. <laughs> All right, listen, I can't help it. I, I think these jokes are the funniest jokes he's ever had, right? Christmas time he had one. He said, uh, what, what kind of motorcycle does, uh, well, does Santa ride? What did he say? A holy Davidson. A holy Davidson. <laughs> anyway, look, goofy. But what this does is this, he's in front of the customer every time, every month. 
his customers get this. He reminds them every single month, hey, I'm your car guy, come back to me. And because he's been doing this, he started this from day one. Bef because he's been doing this, after the first 12 months, he's not taken an up, a fresh up since then, not taken a fresh customer. Everyone who comes to Tommy comes to him through a repeat or a referral. And we all know the results of a repeat and a referral. When somebody comes into you that's, well, first of all, they've already bought a car. Well, it, it's a 90% it's a done deal. All you gotta do is give them the car they want. If they come in as a referral, it's a 70% done deal because they already like and trust you, right? So, I mean, that's what prospecting is. And asking the people who purchased a car before from you, hey, do you know anybody who's in the market? Hey, do you know anybody at work? Don't ask, do you know anybody who's in the market? That's pretty broad, right? But there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, Bob, you know, do you know anybody who, uh, at your office that may be in need of a vehicle that you can send my way? By the way, I'll give you, I'll give you a referral fee of 150 bucks. Right. I mean, that's a great way to prospect also, right? How about some other ways? Well, when I used to go to the Dolphins games, I'd always sit up in the the nosebleed section, i bring a thousand cards, the Dolphins got a first down, I'd throw the whole bunch of cards in the air, they'd all flip over, <laughs> fall on people's heads. I think I sold three people. When I, get on, when I get on an elevator, I used to live in a building with an elevator, I'd get on the elevator and say, hey, listen, anybody wants a card? Right? But nobody ever does that. I mean, the bottom line is most people get into the car business waiting for the car business to make them happy. Right. They don't right. go after it. Right. They don't realize the car business gives you an opportunity to run your own business. Yeah, it's, well, you're in a business within a business. Absolutely. And just like this newsletter that they send out, you know, you don't pay for this stuff. I mean, the dealership pays for everything. I mean, it is a business within a business. It is a business. You always talk about uh, the guy that worked at your dealership uh, that did really well. I oh, know. I think you trained him. He was a member of a church, and he set up a table at, outside his church. Charles Rogers. Charles Rogers. So Charles Rogers would set up a table. He asked the pastor of his local church if he was able to set up a table, and then everybody that bought a car from him actually $200, $200 went back to the church, and they gladly said yes. So every, I guess, weekend, right, or Sunday, yeah. he would set it up. Hey, maybe he's, how many cars a month he sell? A handful? Oh, well, he was a 30-car guy, but... You know, the first time he did it, he put the table in donuts, and after the service was over, the pastor made an announcement, go see Charles, you want a car? There was like six or seven people following him to work that day. Yeah. He sold four cars. It's about being a businessman and a businesswoman, isn't it? Yeah. It's about being a businessman and a businesswoman when you're in the car business. Guys, you don't work for the dealership. Let's be crystal clear. Yeah, you do work for the dealership. I, what I mean by that is you're going to get a check at the end of the week, and on the top, uh, top left-hand corner is going to be the dealership name, and on the bottom right-hand corner is going to be a signature by someone else. But you're in business for yourself, so you don't work for them. What I mean by that is you've got to go out there and act like a businessman or a business person. You could do so many different ways of prospecting like we talked about today. How about business networking groups, BNI meetings, local chambers. Steve Harrington, who I've worked with for, for over 20 years now, Steve works at Coconut Creek Auto Mall, and Steve Harrington sells, and I'm not exaggerating, guys. I know you're watching this. And I've said this before, this is no exaggeration, one at a time, no fleet, one at a time. How many cars a month does Steve, does Steve sell? 70 to 100. He sells over 100 cars a month now. He was just written up in Hyundai Magazine yeah. uh, as the top salesperson in the country. He sells over 100 cars a month, guys. And he does that by networking and prospecting, going to B&I groups. He's a member of every chamber around, uh, Broward Chamber, Fort Lauderdale Chamber, Coral Springs Chamber. And, and he has three assistants that the dealership pays for him now. Why? Because he's always out there prospecting. We have to remember that you are a businesswoman and a businessman. And that's how you have to treat this business, right or wrong? Absolutely. It's your own business. Stop waiting for something to happen. Make something happen. The dealership provides everything. And you don't pay for the overhead. You know, that's why we've done so well. Because we went out looking for it. I mean, you can't leave home without your business cards. Everywhere you go, you go to the convenience store. Hey, Mr. Convenient Guy, call me if you need a new or used car. Gas station, call me if you need a car. Publix, call me if you need... Wherever you go, barber shop. Well, I don't go to barber anymore. <laughs> but no matter where you go, you got to give out... And I used to always say, you need to give a, a minimum of five business cards outside the dealership every week. Outside the dealership, you More need to give that. away five. Yeah, I mean, you got to Minimum do five. Yeah. You know, and again, it, it, you know, it's so funny, and I want to talk about why that probably doesn't happen often. For some reason, most of us in the car business aren't proud of being in the car business. And I want to say this. We need to be very proud of being in the car business. We need to be so super proud of being able to sell cars. Guys, you've got to be able to get out there and to do this and to actually just knock on those doors. 
You know, when you go and, and you, you're at a party or something and somebody's an attorney or a doctor, they gladly tell you that. You have to gladly tell people, hey, I am in the car business. I offer you, I have new cars, used cars. I can sell you cars from $5,000 to $100,000. And you got to be proud of being in the automotive industry. And you should be proud of being in the automotive industry. That's why prospecting is so important. Customer service and prospecting is at the top of the list. Another thing is, is when, you, when you sell a car to a customer, once you sell a car to a customer, and if they call up the next day or a couple days later and they don't they have a question or a concern or maybe there's something that is not going right with the car, don't run from it. You've got to be excited about it. You've got to take care of that customer. That's how you be, build repeat and referral business, by being that person on top of it, right? Richard Branson said it right. He says you have two first impressions. When you meet your client for the first time, you know, make sure you really impress them. And the next one is when they have a problem with your product or service, take care of it immediately. immediately. You take care of it immediately, they're going to remember. But most people will sell somebody a car, never call them back. Oh, this guy's complaining he wants floor mats, I'm not going to call him, whatever. That person will never come back to you and they'll never come back to your dealership. Right. And again, that's exactly the reason why that you want to be all over that. That customer is so valuable. Guys, this is not a job. The automotive industry is not a job. The automotive industry is a career, a career that you can build for yourself. And I want to reemphasize, this: you're in business for yourself. The dealership pays for the, listen, just think about what the dealership does for everybody in this business. They give you a place to work. You have an office, a computer. You have lights over your head. You don't pay for the lights. You don't pay for the rent. Hey, they even give you inventory, millions and millions of dollars of inventory for you to sell. Hey, they even pay for customers to come to you. They pay for everything. You want to send a piece of mail out? They're going to pay for it which means that you're in business for yourself. And all they ask for is, 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 is a little bit of love from you. Man, what an opportunity we have. Don't sit around, prospect all the time, especially when you're not working. The most valuable time to do that is when you're not working, when you're off, when you're leisure, when you're hanging out, have those cards with you. And They're all keep, seeds, you they, keep planting seeds. Some of them are gonna grow. Yeah, absolutely. But if they, they, they do not have it, you know, you, met, you hit it on before, the, the thing that bothers me the most is when I meet somebody, I said, when you buy a car? And New Year's, I had an Uber driver. He picked me up in Miami, and, and I, he, he bought a brand new uh, Priestess. And I said, Who, what's the salesman's name? He goes, I don't know. Mm. A month and a half ago, he doesn't know the salesman's name. So here's a little tip I share with a lot of people. When I sold cars, the last thing I did, I wanted everybody to know my name. So when I sold cars where the person was in the finance department, I used to get cards and put them over the sun visors. I put cards underneath all the floor mats, front and back. I put a card inside the gas cap door. I put a card on top of the spare tire. I put a card everywhere. So they're driving, and all of a sudden the sun comes out. They pull the visor. Look at Al left his car there. <laughs> now they're vacuuming the, the car. They open them. Oh, Al's there. I never want them to forget my name. And that's why we've been so successful. As simple as it is, the problem, the whole problem is, Matt, if I may, is that your goals and dreams aren't big enough. See, if your goals and dreams are big enough, then you're going to do whatever it takes. Absolutely. You've got to have big goals and dreams. Successful. Absolutely. You're in business for yourself. So as we, as we kind of wrap this up, I want you guys just to think about some of the, the, the ideas that we gave you today with, with prospecting. Not just only the business cards, but the often owner list, the people who no longer are at your goal. It is gold. You know, those BNI groups, the networking groups, the credit unions, all these different places, all gold. Guys, prospecting is the way to do it. And, and that's how you, and I'm just going to read that one more time. So again, the definition of prospecting. An apparent probability of advancement, success, profit. The outlook of the future. Here's my favorite. To search or explore as for gold. That's what prospecting is. So, Brendan, any questions, any comments that we can answer at this time? We have a training right now. We're actually going to be doing a four-day sales training here at the office starting in about 15 minutes. So we are going to be back on Friday to do another sales training in the morning at 9 o'clock. You definitely want to join us. I see there's a bunch of comments on there, aren't there? Yeah, so a lot of highs. Iris uh, Allison says hello. Iris. Uh, Josh Shohas says we have orphan owners too. Al knows. Yeah, <laughs> Josh. Josh is in the, uh, is in the, uh, uh, the real estate business. Let's, let's say that, right? The real estate industry. Um, orphan owners. It's gold. TQ's on. Hey, TQ <laughs> all the way from California. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, so just a lot of shout outs and thank yous. Awesome. Well, listen, guys, we had, a, we had a great time today with this morning with you. We're going to get out to our sales meeting. You have any questions, any comments, you can always reach out to us. Always call us. You can always reach out to Al and myself. You guys have our phone numbers. You guys have our instant message. Any way you can reach out to us, we're there to help you all the time.
And remember, today's a gift. It's the present. Give it your best today. Because if you give it your best today, guess what tomorrow might be? Even better. Yes, it will. Don't sit around today and make something happen. Hey, it's the middle of the month. It's hump day. Let's go. Are you on track for your goals? If your goal was 20 cars for the month, today's the 15th. What's today? The 15th? Mm -hmm. Today's the 15th. 14th. Today's the 14th. Are you sitting at 10? If you're not sitting at 10 and your goal is at 20, you need to get up and you need to start working harder. Put in a few more hours. You can get there. You can do it. We'll see you on Friday.